team. So let's jump onto a quick demo. How do we create these config maps in the Kubernetes cluster? So we assume that team before you watching this one or before you starting this one, you must have an idea about kubectl command line and how to create a pod or what is a pod in Kubernetes. We must expect that that is a prerequisite. So that is what you can think about it. Now here team, let's start creating a config map first of all from a file. So I have the data available here on my machine. Let's say that I have a properties file called as db.properties. Now let me show you these properties here simply. Now you can see that inside this I have mentioned my database name, database connection URL, whatever the database properties that are required. So these information need to be passed on to my application at runtime because this information is not part of the image. So how do I do that? So we create a config map in Kubernetes using these values and then we can pass these values to the pods or running containers at runtime. So application can utilize these things accordingly. So let's start creating a config map by using the file first of all and then we can also use by different literal values that also will do it. So let's use command line called as kubectl create config map and a config map name. Let's say that this is my db config or db conf one. I'm giving it as Jeff's reference. And here, because we are going to use the file to create this config map, so we must use something called as from file is equals to and the file name that you're going to do it. Simply create this one. So it says the config map is created successfully. So we can always get the config maps and describe the config map to see what is inside that one. So kubectl get config map to list the config maps that are available in your Kubernetes cluster. And if you want to know more details about it, you can always describe the config map. Config map and then the config map name. So dbconf1, we can see it. dbconf1. See this, you can see that the database is available. Now these values are stored at your ETCD data store team. By default, Kubernetes stores all this information inside the you know, ETCD database that you have it in part of the cluster. So that is where the values get stored. Now, once the config map is available, once the config map is created successfully, these data can be injected into the pods at runtime. Whenever you run a pod, in Kubernetes cluster, these data can be injected into the pod by using various mechanisms like by using volumes or by using environment variables. Also, we can do it. So we'll look at both of the things. So first look at, uh, you know, the by volume concept so we can do it. Let's me create a pod spec which has a volume in it. So we have a pod definition here ready for us. Let's look at it and we'll try to understand. Now here the pod specification as we you must be knowing all these things accordingly. So simply we are referencing the volumes here and the name of the volume but the content of this volume is referenced from the config map and we must mention the config map name here that we created. So the config map name that we created is simply called as dbconf1 so just reference that and the same thing will be mounted. The data will be injected into this volume and the volume data need to be injected or mounted onto a container using the mount path. So we are using the volume mounts in this pod spec, container spec. So here the name of the volume that we want to use it and inside the container at what location we want to mount these properties. So slash app config is something inside the container spec will be available for us. So let's quickly create this pod and we'll see whether we are able to see the data inside the pod or not. So let's create it kubectl create hyphen f a volume pod we can do it simply see that the pod is getting created here kubectl get pods so the pod is up and running so in order to validate whether my config map data is available inside the pod or not so we can simply get inside the pod definition or pod and then we can validate at the location we mounted so let's use the kubectl exec command here to get inside the pod right and then we can simply validate that data hyphen hyphen uh, bin bash we can simply get inside the pod and we remember uh, we mounted inside the container at a slash app config so let's go to the slash app config folder and you can see that the database properties are available here we can simply look at more database properties 
as we can see that whatever the data that we were passed inside the config map now is available inside the container so application can please refer to this file or grab the values from this file and start making a connection to the production database accordingly now this is how team we can make the application images more portable that is what we call it by decoupling the whatever the necessary information need to be decoupled from the image content now this is one way of creating your config map so let's get out of this uh, pod again so the first way of creating the config map team by using the property file or by using a file basically we can have n number of files also we can create the config map from multiple files also that is possible so in that case we can use uh, a directory path or you can even use something from file from multiple times like kubectl create config from file and from file again we can simply give another file here you say that we can use another file also is equals to whatever you have another file you can simply pass it on means that a cube config map will allow you to create a config map from using different files at once also we can use that now this is uh, the concept like how we can inject the data or how we can create a config map using a property file and inject the data into the uh, containers at runtime by using a volume concept now let's try to go for the second method which is going to be we're going to create a config map using a literal values which means that a directly a key value pair instead of a file and we can inject the same data into the pod or container spec again using environment variables instead of using a volume concept so let's do that one also so kubectl create config map let's say that this time i'm creating db conf2 but here this time i'm not going to use a file but i'm going to pass the values directly let's say that here this is called as from literal right so is equals to we just need to use the key value pairs right so let's say that uh, db name or let's say that db host is equals to my db and along with that i can pass another thing again from literal so this time we're going to pass something called as db url whatever it is and is equals to uh, let's say that uh, we are going to pass the jdbc url jdbc dot uh, jdbc dot oracle dot uh, thin if you know database connection properties team you can see that and at the rate my db host and the port number of your database 1521 similar to this right this is the two values team likewise you can pass on any number of values key value pairs directly to the config map so you can see that kubectl create config map this one earlier we used a file to create the properties now we are using the literal values directly to create a config map so let's create this one you can see that the dbconf2 is created it says that dbconf2 uh, it's a spelling mistake that should be fine so qb kubectl get uh, config maps again we can use it we can see that the config map is available kubectl describe a config map simply and then you can use the value okay now you can see that there is a db host and value is available this is just like a key value page simple as it is there are two key value pages available inside my config map now earlier we used volume to do it we can still use this as a volume to inject into the pod spec but this time we're going to use a different mechanism let's import this or let's take these values and get them or create them as an environment variables inside the pod so how do i use that again we can simply use uh, have a pod specification ready let's look at this here we can see that the same thing again everything is there but here we are using env from means we are creating environment variables inside the pod and we are getting the environment variables from config map reference we are just doing it and the name of the config map which is going to be uh, db cont basically i think we have given us some wrong spelling there that's okay cont 2 this is what is a config map let's validate the name once i believe uh, db cont 2 that is what the name of the config map so let's look at this so simply give this value we are injecting the config config map data now as environment variables inside the pod spec let's see if we are able to do this successfully or not now let's deploy this pod kubectl create iphone f env pod that's great so let's look at this now we see that uh, the data is created i believe kubectl get pods 
okay our env var pod is also running so let's validate these environment variables or let's validate these are imported as environment variables inside the pod or not so we can get inside the pod again qctl exec hyphen it whatever it is uh, let's say that bin bash get inside the pod and check the environment variables of this pod altogether you can simply say env here to check the environment variables okay there are a lot of variables here uh, what we'll do is let's grab the values for the db so grab uh, db here okay we can see that our both values that we have given inside the config map are injected as environment variables inside the config map right so this is how the, we can make our applications more portable application images are portable uh, that is how we need to do it decouple the configuration from the con image content as it is required mostly the environment specific configuration that we cannot keep it inside the image content must be decoupled and the way you pass them into the containers at run times in kubernetes is using by the cube config maps so config maps is this uh, allows you to do this kinds of concept team so that's all about for this video and thank you so much uh, please follow us thank you so much